What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanasian, my name is Shanks and today we are playing a free for all match on the beautiful map Mirkwood in the battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 as usually we pick random just like everybody else and do it you cannot make this thing up you cannot make this up that's literally impossible what are the chances dude there are three different factions beside Isengard but I don't know man I don't know man it's I, I don't know like sometimes I have like the words they lose their meanings okay but anyways we're gonna try our best to win this game we are opening with double furnace with the orphan we are also using the hd edition for this game hopefully you guys will enjoy and yeah you can also use hd edition when you play battle for middle or fun it's comfortable with uh, bfme1 patch 2.22 for now but it might not be in the future because we are also obviously changing models textures and also animations Anyways, Isengard is a pretty solid faction, Mirkwood is a little bit smaller than the map, you know, Mordor, which hopefully would mean that we will have a bit more action from the minute one. And you know me, you know, camping is not my style, and we're gonna go inside the jeans ASAP, and we will try to deal as much economical damage to the opening players as we potentially can. Okay, double meal opening, that's very good. The good thing about the double mill is for the evil factions, you get like an insane boost of the uh, wood bonus. And remember in a free for all match you also get more money than you would normally get in a one on one situation. That's why opening with double furnace is actually a pretty solid strategy. Oh, okay. It looks like you want to go for the creep boys. Okay, we are good. I mean, we, we should be in a good spot because after destroying the slammer mill, we will be capturing it for ourselves, which means we will have even more wood bonus. And that also means we will be able to cast, you know, to fill up the castle within a, within a minute. We should be in a very, very good spot. Look at these Lumber Mill workers, guys. They are going to war. <laughs> I'm gonna kill them. Okay, so... Once this is built up, you have like three Lumber Mills, which is a very ideal situation. And when I play free for all matches with Isengard, I'm actually, you know, pretty tempted to rush heroes. Like Lourdes opening then you know even Sariman rush because once again you should be you know like the thing is the one settlement is very close to our castle which makes it almost impossible for the opening team opening players to reach you can also creep this in the middle okay i mean he was also able to creep but it's okay we gotta get lords on the field first this way, you know, leveling him up to level 5 is going to be a bit easier. But, guys, I'm telling you, what are the chances, you know? What are the chances, man? I, I don't get it. Like, how many times are we getting to play Isengard? I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I'm starting to have, like, an antipathy, you know, to the Isengard faction. Because I like Isengard a lot, but I'm a little bit bored of it after playing it for, like, 100 out of... 105 games, you know? Seems a little bit too much. Okay, we have the fighting Urukai now. We can build the Uruk pit and get it to level 2 just to recruit some pikemen. But before we're gonna go for the upgrades, we will actually get Saruman the Great. Saruman the White Wizard on the field first. Especially in the patch 2.2, the Saruman is now so good, guys. I mean, he was always good, he was very underrated in compared to, you know, the competitor heroes from the other factions like Witch King from Mordor, Aragorn from Rohan and or Gandalf from the Gunner faction, but Saruman was never a bad hero. Like, the Warm Tongue ability can be literally game-changing. Like, think about it this way, Aragorn can use EOD, but you need to get level 10 for that, which is, you know, let's be real, not gonna happen in every single game like it's one of the most rare thing actually gonna happen in one of the one of the games that aragon gonna hit level 10. again after the scene the war of power can be you know destroying lots of armies lots of units but you gotta also get gandalf to level 10 first which again is not gonna happen in every single game but saruman has all his abilities unlocked the second he enters the battlefield including the warm tongue you know which makes him extremely powerful and now in the patch 2.2, he has even a new ability, which is called Will of Saruman. The second he hits level 8, he will get sustain and recovery. So, we wanted to implement a new ability for, his, for the wizard, but we didn't, you know, not every ability has to be destructive. Like, not everything has to be related to killing enemy units or destroying enemy buildings. 
I think what the evil factions lack of, what the evil factions need the most, is actually sustain in the recovery. Okay, we have a level 2 combo. We can use Warchant. Our, our Lords is level 3. Um, would be amazing if... Oh! Let's fight the Gonda Knights. What is he doing? It's a level 3. What is he doing? He's making a mistake. We can finish him off. Come, come, come. Nice. Nice. Ooh. Oh, 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 okay. Miscalculated. I could have casted it a bit earlier. Then I could have secured the creep for myself. But, you know, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Look at the red glow animation, boys. Holy guacamole. I love this. New visual effects a lot. Okay, we need only one more level. And we are golden. Like, you guys don't understand. Like, maybe you do, because I'm, you know, talking about it in every single video. But you guys maybe don't understand it well enough. Like, the, you know, leadership is huge in this game. Like, the amount of stuff you can do when you have leadership is insane. Like, one unit can be as strong as ten units. That's how leadership works in this game. And that's why getting lords to level 5 is the key to victory. And if the enemy has too many leadership bonuses, remember, we are Isengard. We can press one button and all leadership bonuses are gone. We can cripple them. Gimli, what are you doing? We need to be a little bit more patient because our cripple is on cooldown. This Gimli thinks he's tough. Oh. <laughs> Dude, you see, every faction has like a different glow animation. This also will be changed in the upcoming version. The Gimli or the Rohan heroes are gonna glow green. With the Dwarven sound in the background, Gimli, the son of Klein. Oh, he's... okay. But this is no rival of Mindless Oryx, Gimli. These are Rukai. Lords? Nice! That's what I do, boys. That's what I'm talking about. Nice! Now we get our, left, our fighting Urukai to level 5. That means more DPS, 60 percent more damage, to be precise, for any by allied units. Which is pretty good. Like, a lot. It's better than Warchant, in terms of damage at least. And we, I think we need to eventually get some more pikemen upon the field. Um, you know, just because the Gondor player might rush us with the Gondor Knights and shields. So, a little bit scared about that one. But with a couple of pikemen around, we should feel also much more, you know, safe. Okay, so Saruman, then we are good to go. Now the question is, who we gonna attack first? Like, we know that at the bottom right, there is a Isengard. We know that there is a Rohan at the top left, and there is a Gondor at the bottom left, okay? I think, just like Saruman did, we need to attack <laughs> Rohan. And look at this. Dude, this guy is kinda... You see Lourdes, boys? You see Lourdes? Like, you see how insane this hero is? Like, we have killed Gimli, and now we will also kill Legolas. Both of these heroes are way more expensive than Lourdes. And now you might say, yeah, but Isengard is only two heroes. But hey, 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 you know, Lourdes is better than most of the other heroes from all the other factions. Look at them glowing, shining bright like a diamond. My fighting Urukai. Go, come, my servants, as Saruman would like to say. And we've also tainted land available for the next big battle. I mean, just in case. The thing is, when you play Isengard, boys, okay, listen to me. I'm an expert. <laughs> I'm an Isengard expert after playing this many games. So, allow me to give you some tips, okay? When you play Isengard, you, you want to make sure that you don't use tainted land first, okay? That's very important. Unless you know that the enemy land is on cooldown. The way you want to use your land is you want to wait until the opponent is using it on your army and then you want to use your land to cover his land because most of the time you will have more leadership now there are exceptions to this rule but in eight out of ten cases this is how you want to how you want to handle the tainted land you don't want to rush it against gondor you want to wait until gondor is using it then you want to use it because if you use it first he will have the chance to cover your and then you are screwed don't do that okay a quick tip from the Isengard mean player Shanks in 2022. <laughs> okay, so look our army. I'm gonna visit this Isengard a little bit at the bottom right side. 
because we have no siege weapons as we are talking, but the second we make the transition into the siege weapons, I will actually go for the Eisen, uh, for the Rohan. So I want to see, again, when it comes to play free for all games, I want to be involved into as many battles as I potentially can be involved in. This way I can get a bit more power points collected, because once again, you know, power points, this is just the way the game is designed. Power points are the, you know, are like the game winning opportunities for you in mid to lead game. That's how BFME works, you know? We don't want to we don't want to change the essential, the essence of the battle for middle of one. We don't want to make it like a mod. We want to keep it as vanilla as we potentially can with improvements, but not too many changes. Like we already nerfed the EOD and Balrog, but we cannot remove them or we cannot make them useless, you know? <laughs> we shouldn't. They are still very powerful. Okay. So, I think we need to retreat now a little bit. And I wanna... Oh, look, you see? This Gondor is attacking us the second he knows or thinks that we are not there. Okay, now it's the time for the siege weapons. I think um, what we're gonna do is getting some rams or barista. And then later on, we are going for the legendary boom booms, okay? The explosive mines. And sorry for my voice, by the way. I had like a rough weekend, <laughs> you know? Saturday night was kind of hitting me like a truck, boys. And I usually don't drink, you know? But it was a wedding, so I might accept. I meet an exception to the rule. Okay, um, we can go for the industry. Obviously, our money is not looking that great. But again, I don't want to go for this because it's gonna delay my twenty power point, the Balrog. Uh, that's a mistake from you, my my good friend. You cannot take down the Urukpet. I will not allow it. Okay. I mean, the good thing is, Gond you know, when Gondor does that, what he does right now, your pikemen are pretty much countering its, you know, complete game style. Like, the Gondor Knights, they have no chance against my pikemen. You see? When they trample, they get one-shotted. Okay, we need to be a bit patient for the Ballista to arrive, and then the second they are ready, we are ready too. And then it's rock and roll time, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the problem is that's the one thing uh, you know, it's hard but it's hard to explain like when you move out with your all army there is a chance and the chance are uh, the chances are quite high when you are when you're in the in battle for middle of community that all the other people are going to attack you you know the chances are pretty high you know what I'm saying for that reason we should never Ever let the bees unprotected. However, we cannot split the heroes. The heroes they gotta be together to empower the army, right? So let's hope that you know one or two pikemen are gonna be enough to hold the opponent players away from the castle. Because I don't wanna be going back and forth all the time. And that's the that's the good thing about the cavalry in this game that you have the mobility advantage. So in an all-out fight, cavalry never can win against infantry. You know, like basically one pikeman can destroy ten horses, right? couple of combos, they have like the range advantage, they have the firepower, it will be obviously always stronger unless you have Glorious Judge. But the mobility advantage is massive in this game. Like the faster you are, the better it is. Okay, nice. Oh, oh sorry. I was, you know, dude, the, I, have a, I have a gigantic microphone, guys, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's not like a headset microphone, it's like a different microphone, it's like a table microphone, and sometimes I, like, I'm, a, I'm an emotional person, when I'm talking, I might move around my hands, you know, quite often, if they are not, you know, holding the keyboard, then I'm accidentally clicking or, you know, hitting against the microphone, and if this makes noise, sorry for that. Okay, let this siege begin, okay? Alright, I, oh, again, <laughs> I see Aragon and Legoras, and also I see like a, like a wall banner, so we gotta be careful about this. I'm looking for a chance for a, for a juicy fireball, if I can, but it's gonna be tough. Okay, Saruman is only level 5, so we need to be careful. When you, when you're level 8 with Saruman, you can play a bit more risky, but early on it's a bit more difficult. Now we're gonna bring the big, big guns, you know, the explosive mines. And they are also they can also be used for defense. 
So what I like to do with them is I like a camouflage technique, you know? You want to hide them around the trees and you can kind of, I mean, you have seen eventually, you know, my other free for all videos. You know what we can do with that, you know what I'm saying? Um, now the question is, do we just go in? Do we YOLO it? Or are we going to be a bit more smart about it? Because we have no rain. And inside the castle, the Rohan units will have lots of leadership with Aragorn, Theorin, and Statue, and Well, and Gimli, and Degoras. I think we need to play it a bit more smart and slow. I hate to see that, but I think that's the right call. Too long, those peasants stood in your way. Destroy them. Dude, it's so satisfying to accomplish that, but Saruman couldn't in the films, you know? And to destroy the Riddle Mike. Don't get me wrong, I like Rohan. I think Rohan is even my favorite faction out of all factions. I like Rohan's design so much, so cool, so many playstyle possibilities. Like, you have like the early spam power with the peasants, you can, in the mid game, you can get heroes on the field, Eoma Theorin, the cavalry, Prohirim archers, one of my most favorite units in the game. And then later on, you have also. You know, and you know, such a unique faction with all the playstyle possibilities every stage. Oh, oh my goodness, Lords, you are the man, you are the god, Lords. Let's go. Okay, we gotta kill the farm first because the farm is in in the way, and we don't wanna just you know walk into the into this you know to hold on a second, hold on a second. Fireball, boom! That's what I do. Nice. Okay, now we can go inside the jeans. Let's kill Legolas first. This is gonna give us more and more power points. Theorian, what are you doing? Hey, shall we make peace? Hey, <laughs> shall we make peace? No. Okay, Gimli is popping, boys. Gimli is popping off. He is actually one-shotting the ballista. Look, 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 you look, you see, you see, you wanna kill my you wanna kill my ex you see that? You wanted to kill my expose, but no, 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 this is not gonna happen to me once again, okay? I am paying attention, okay? I am paying attention. No, sir. You g Did you guys see? He was actually trying to aim for my explosive mind. But as he was... Wo okay, hold on a second. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I was hoping that the Gondor is fighting against other Isengard, but of course not. Oh, we need to... Oh my goodness, he has even the lightning sword on his Gandalf with the red rope. Gandalf the red. Oh boy. Okay, I mean, I think we need to finish this guy first now. The good thing is, we will kill all his stuff, and then we will get lots of power points, you know? That's a good thing. Aragorn. You know, Aragorn. Strider. Come on now. Why are you fighting for Rohan at the first place? You should be... I can hear you asking, but hey, Shanks. Or not maybe even hey, Shanks. Maybe like a, like a logical question to yourself. But hey. What does Aragorn do in Rohan faction? Isn't Aragorn the king of Gondor? And you are absolutely right. But remember in the films, Aragorn was fighting more... I mean, to be honest, they were independent, right? The Fellowship members, especially the three hunters like Legolas, Gimli and Aragorn. That's one of the reasons. But the second main reason is, if you put Aragorn in the same faction with Gandalf... GG, well played, my friend. And then, you know, good luck. Good luck dealing with that. I think it's more for like for like a balance purposes. Like every faction is like a mighty hero. Beside Mordor, really, Mordor is Witch King. Yeah, it's like a very good sportive hero. Flying heroes are always causing problems, but like Witch King, in compared to other heroes like Saruman, Gandalf, or Aragorn, has not the same destruction power. But again, strength doesn't mean destruction. You know, utility in sport is also at least as powerful, especially in this game, in which leadership is able to stack with each other, and you can make your units infinitely strong. So in a 4v4 match, if you have four unique factions, with Rohan, Gondor, Isengard, Mordor combination, and you have like all these unique leaderships from Theoden, Eoma, Witch King, Darkness, Eye of Sauron, Drummer Troll, Lourdes, Warchan, Saruman, Gana, Farami, Boromir, you know, Stajo, well, then I think you can make them literally invincible, that they wouldn't take any damage from, for example, something like a Visa Plus from Gandalf. And thank you for following the Twitch channel, appreciate it. And also on top of that, they would eventually one-shot everything they touch, beside EOD and Balrog, because they almost take no damage from anything else but magical damage, right? Hold on a second. I mean, this guy is camping. <laughs> like, 
I want to take down the Gondor player first. The thing is, Gondor in lead game is very strong. Gondor, where was Gondor? Where was for? Dude, I'm such a nerd guy, sorry for quoting over and over again the movie lines. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with me. Really, sorry. Sorry if it's too deserving, if it's too annoying. But just, you know, that, you know that's just the way I am. Okay, we can use Warcha now and go inside the jeans. You see Trebuchet? Like, the thing is, in lead game, we don't want to hold on a second. You want to fight this? Read a mark? Gondor goes for it, and then Rohan will answer. I can... You see? That's the time for you to, you know, block it. That's the time you want to cover this, okay? We, we, need to, we don't even need to use the Freezing Ring. This is going to be one of those games in which we have to defeat every single one of them. Because we have defeated the number one player, the Rohan. And now we... Okay. I see Gandalf. Can I cripple him somehow? Please, cripple? Uh, we can't. Look, too many trebuchet. Oh, uh, we, we need to kind of be careful. We don't want to feed too many power points. We don't want to give him the chance to get the eel summon unlocked, uh, which will give him the option to kill Lord. So we need to build the Vork Pit um, and also Armory. I mean, first of all, Armory for the Blades. We have we were skipping, you know, the Blades. We didn't purchase them in the first place. And when you go for the Vork Riders, you want to have them with the Forge Blades. So, that's something you can do with Isengard. Uh, you can, you know, build up the armory and get everything you need now, purchase first, and then later on, if you need additional, you know, upgrade, like the, in this case, for example, the Forge Blades, you can just replace it when, once you have a better eco. Because early on, you don't need Blades in a 2v2 or a 3 4 on match, you know? And you go for the combos. In a 1 on 1 situation, it's a different story. In a 1 on 1 situation, for example, you don't need early on Fire Arrows. So when you play Gond Isengard against Gondor, you can build your armory by banner, heavy armor, and forge blades. Then you can demolish your armory, you know, get some pikemen with the banner and also forge blades. And then later on, if the game goes on like a, you know, like goes on a while, <laughs> I can't even talk, and you have to eventually deal with eagles, then you can replace or rebuild your armory and buy the high arrows. Then, when you have better eco. Okay, um, he broke lots of parts of the wall with the explosive mine, and we don't want to give him back map control. That's very important. We need, we need to make this Gondor poor, you know? Like, we need to eliminate the good factions first. I want to make a El Clasico situation between evil and evil, you know what I'm saying? May the better evil player win. And I don't want to be, you know... <laughs> To certain, but I don't think this guy's Isengard is as good as my Isengard. After playing, I mean, I don't even know how good his Isengard is, but after me playing Isengard in almost every single day game I played since weeks, I don't think many people have the chance to beat me with my main army now, you know? Okay. Vork Riders! My Vorks are hungry, guys. Now it's time. It's time to rock and roll. It's time to go inside the jeans. Oh! Dara Isengard is also here. Okay, guys, we are sandwiching this Gondor now. We are sandwiching this Gondor. That's how it feels, okay? That's how it feels. Now you know how I feel when I play in a 1v2 situation. I mean, we are the brotherhood, you know, Isengard Union, you know, the, uni the union of the two towers, two Orphans. But uh, the brotherhood ends the second the Gondor gets defeated, because then it's about war, you know? I think that was also the plan from Saruman. Guys, don't you think? Like, I believe... Guys, quick question to you, so you can, you know, let me know your opinions in the comment section down below. The question of the day is, what would Saruman do if... He would be able to get access, you know, if he would be able to get his fingers on the one ring. Like, let's assume that, you know, they captured Frodo, the Uruks, and then they brought the Hobbit to Orphank. So Saruman was able to find Frodo, and with that also get the one ring. What would have happened? Would Saruman, you know, give up, give the ring to Sauron and become like a, like a servant? What's happening here? What the heck? Did you guys see what happened? What just happened? It's like a sign from Saruman. Or would Sar Saruman would like maybe would say no. You know, I, I was using you, Sauron. I was just trying to get the one ring. 
and now the ring is mine. And then he would eventually try to use the ring. But the thing is, there can only be one Lord of the Rings, and he only serves his own master, Sauron. So what do you think? I think was Saruman smart enough to understand that the ring is never gonna be his, you know, his ring? Oh my goodness. The Villa of Saruman. I'm actually curious. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think Saur Saruman had like all his own plans. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what he wanted to achieve. I think, or what, you know, I've read somewhere. I don't even know where. It's been a long time. That Saruman was actually jealous on, on Gandalf. Because Gandalf got one of the rings. One of, one of the one of the Alvin rings, you know? Nenya, I think it was the name. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, everybody was loving Gandalf more than Saruman. And I think that made, that made him kind of jealous, you know? And then he decided to become evil. I mean, to be honest, the evil factions in the evil side in the Lord of the Rings wasn't very smart. <laughs> because what, what they could have done is attack at the same time. So imagine if Isengard would attack Rohan, but at the same time, you know, Mordor would attack... Gondor. Like, he would have not been able to defend this. I mean, at least Gondor wouldn't. Like, Rohan defended itself without the help of Gondor, but Gondor would have fallen. Like, without Aragorn's army after that, without Legolas Gimli, without the Rohirrim coming in the last possible second and saving, once again, the Gondorians from the from the forces of evil, Gondor would have been dead. Like, White City would be a dead city. Or a Sin City. Okay, now it's the time, boys. May the better Isengard win. It's time. I'm going for it, boys. I'm going for it. We have 13 power points in the bank. Let's use War Chant. And we have also Ring. And we are only 7 power points, 6.5 power points. We need to be careful about, uh, about our heroes. And we need to make sure that we always keep an eye on the enemy Saruman. That's the priority. So the second Saruman steps forward, we need to cripple him. Because we cannot give him the chance to warm tongue our army. But the problem is our Saruman... Uh, hold on a second. I can actually heal Lourdes very soon. With Saruman's ability. Thing is, our Lourdes is very low. And I don't want him to die, you know. Let's heal him up. Boom. Nice. You see how important... Dude, my... My bad. Ah, my bad. Sorry. My works actually did nothing. Not. Can I kill him? Okay, my Ballista could actually maybe finish him off. Let's use Fireball. Where is his Lord? I don't see his Lord. Fireball, nice. Okay, we should be able to take him down. That's gonna give us also lots of power points now. Our Saruman is in a very good spot. We gotta keep an eye on the Lords. We got 175 gold for killing this White Wizard from the pillage of Lords. There comes a Freezing Rain, but I can also use mine, no problemo. Um, I wanna bring an um, Explosive Mine to this location. He has also Ballista shooting me down all the time. I want to kill this guy. I don't want to lose my level 10 combo. Hold on a second. I have an idea, boys. Watch this. You go back. Level 10. Let's not lose him. Boom. Our thing is no more. The explosive mind power, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I do, okay? That's what I do. The big plays. That's why you, that's why you are here. I hope not. I hope not that's the reason why you are here. <laughs> that's not the reason. That's not the only reason, at least, why you are watching my videos, because... I'm getting older, guys. I don't know if I can plop this place many more often in the future. I'm gonna steal them. Servants! But the music went a little bit too crazy. Okay, that was not the best form tongue in the game. <laughs> but I think he has only pikemen, so he cannot take us down. Uh, look, 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 Lourdes, Lourdes, look, 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 Lourdes, you cannot. No, 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 no. Whom do you serve, Lourdes? Saruman! Oh my goodness. I think he won't die. I, I don't, nah, he won't die. There is no world in which he's gonna die. If almost the Balrog anyway, guys. With the Balrog, we can end this Isengard once and for all. And I, I hope... Oh, he's demolishing everything, huh? Okay, GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did... Again, I was hitting the microphone. My bad, guys. <laughs> my bad. Dude, what's happening to me today? If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like. And also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. You know, as always, keep hitting like a track and stay beyond standards. Peace out.